Arts Week at SGUSD 2021. Arts Week is a district initiative that was developed to motivate and encourage our school community to create art and to promote arts education in the San Gabriel Unified School District. We are so proud to present this inaugural event this year. It's been running all week long and uh, we, it, we hope you've enjoyed it and we hope you continue to enjoy it for the rest of the year. These videos will remain up. My name is Samantha Tyson. I am your host for Arts Week and I'm also the Visual and Performing Arts Coordinator for San Gabriel Unified. This event was part of our strategic plan for visual and performing arts that we developed and implemented in June of 2019. It has been in the works for a couple of years. This year it's virtual. We have big plans in the future to um, have an in-person, uh, very exciting event. And we'd love for you to be a part of that in the years to come. This event is also a way to bring in some funding to help support that strategic plan, which will improve and strengthen VAPA programs throughout our entire district. For years to come. We want to thank all of these organizations here who have supported our arts education this past year and also these fantastic human beings who have donated to support this event. Thank you so much. We do accept sponsorships. We're still accepting sponsorships and donations um, in any amount and you can visit our website sgusdvapa.org forward slash sponsorships. All proceeds go directly to support the further implementation of that strategic plan which you can see online at our website. We are very thrilled to present today's lesson for you. If you have ever seen the very trendy um, and, and super cool abstract art painting technique called acrylic pouring, and you might've been interested in finding out more on how to do it. We have a special guest with us all the way from Australia today. Her name is Tracy Pinedo, and she happens to be an auntie at McKinley Elementary. She is the sister of Vanessa Pinedo, who has been our co-chair of the art contest. So without further ado, she's gonna teach us how to do acrylic pouring. Please enjoy. Give me one second to get our video up and running. It's far away, so it might be a second. Hold on. Good day, mates. My name is Tracy Pinedo and I'm from Los Angeles, California, but I'm currently living in Sydney, Australia. I'm so happy to be here with you today and uh, so grateful to be a part of your amazing event and just want to share my method to my madness that is acrylic pouring. So for those of you who don't know what acrylic pouring is, it's basically watering down your acrylic paint and using the fluid motion with your breath, a straw or a blow dryer to make different shapes, different, just whatever you want, whatever style you want. But before we get started, I do want to do an acknowledgement of the country. And I wanna acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who um, are First Nations people of this land. I want to pay respect to the elders past, present, and future. And I want to acknowledge that I currently live on Gadigal land, which is a part of the Eora Nation, which is now known as Sydney. So it's important to acknowledge the Aboriginal people of this land because it always was their land and it always will be. So let's get started. Okay, I just want to tell you first, whoever has long hair, Please, by all means, put it in a, a rubber band. Um, I was doing a video yesterday. <laughs> I didn't take my own advice and my hair dipped into the paint. And let me tell you, that's happened to me over and over every time I do it. So please learn from my mistakes. Also, if you're wearing long earrings or long jewelry, please take it off because that will also, because you're blowing close to the canvas. So <laughs> anything dangling is going to get into the paint. I promise you that. So let's start off um, by listing off what you will need for this type of artwork. Um, obviously, we have your paint. I'm a bit of a penny pincher. <laughs> 
when it comes to my artwork because it's just paint and it's just acrylic pouring and and you have all these things in your kitchen I, I bet you you do so you don't need to go to Michael's or any of these fancy pants art stores go to the Dollar Tree please go to the Dollar Tree get yourself some paint um, and I'll tell you how to choose your paints or how I choose my paints um, get yourself some popsicle sticks. So after you have your ice cream, save the sticks. Get some paper cups. Anything that's um, reusable would be great. Um, I use a metal straw because I can just use it over and over and over. Um, obviously water. You want to get a cardboard box. So I just got a box and cut it. Just make sure that it's going to fit the size of your canvas, whatever shape you're using. And um, I usually stabilize the canvas with four cups on either sides. And you want to lift the canvas with the cups or anything that you can put under to stabilize it because the um, liquid is going to fall to the box. So you definitely want to um, have it sturdy and not have it go anywhere. Okay, um, I was going to pre-mix the paint, but I thought it was important to show you the consistency. So let us start with a blue. Okay, so the way I choose my paints is I, I always do acrylic pouring with music. So today I'm doing a Californication Red Hot Chili Pepper album. And as you can see, there are some pretty blues. I see some whites, greens, orange, red, yellow. So that's exactly what I picked up today, all those colors. And I'm gonna teach you two different styles of acrylic pouring. One is just a, it's called flip cup. The other one is a Dutch pour, which will, uh, I'll use a blow dryer. I promise you parents that the paint won't go everywhere. <laughs> it just moves it on the canvas only. It's not going to go on the floor, not going to go on the wall. So don't worry about that. Okay, let's start with one of your paints, whatever color you choose. I'm going to use this whole tube and it is three ounces. So jump all of that in there. And this paint, I actually got from Kmart because I unfortunately don't have the Dollar Tree here in Australia. So Kmart is pretty big here. And these little tubes were just $2 each. And they have a water base already. So it's really great for acrylic pouring because I don't have to pour that much water. It's already there made for me. So you want to pour a little at a time because you can always add more, but you can't take it away. And the reason why pouring too much water inside is the reason why that's bad is because when the, when the canvas dries, it'll crack. It'll have just little cracks because it was too watery. So the consistency that I'd like to um, use is kind of like a pancake consistency, the, the best pancake you can make. And I know they're hard to make. So not the thick kind, this would be too thick and not too thin because then that would be a crepe. So you just want it just right. Something like that. It could use a little more. Okay. Also with paints, you don't have to go out and buy every color because if you know the color will, you know that you can make different colors. For example, I'm gonna make my orange by using the red and the yellow. So I saved $2, <laughs> just work smarter, not harder.
So we're just gonna quickly mix all the paints and then set them to the side. So with flip cut, you're gonna have one color as the base. And um, I honestly just choose my color scheme based on my mood and based on what the music's telling me to do. I know that may sound weird, <laughs> but I'm a weird gal, so it works out for me. Okay, so I'm gonna mix a little of the red that I already pre-mixed with that orange, I mean the yellow to make the orange. I wish I could have done this live because I know some of you might have some questions about Australia. Let's see, what can I tell you? Well, you all are going into spring and I'm going into fall and winter. So that's pretty weird. We have the opposite seasons. Today is Thursday around 1.30 p.m. And I know it's your Wednesday seven, almost 7.30 p.m. So we're a day apart in time. Uh, we don't have kangaroos running on the street, <laughs> but if you go maybe an hour drive out of the city, you will see them everywhere. The koalas actually do live in the wild, but they live mostly on the islands. So there's like so many different little islands um, just around the coast, and that's where they live. With acrylic pouring, you can't go wrong. You just can't. Every, everything you make is going to come out gorgeous, I promise you. So whatever you use for your base, um, all of that doesn't matter. Just do what you feel in the moment. And I think I'm going to use the blue as my base. Okay, so I'm gonna have to cut part of my head off to show you what I'm doing here. All right. All right, we're gonna start with the blue base. Now you can use gloves or you can just use your hands. I like to get messy with it and I just use my hands. So it's up to you. If you use your hands, just make sure you have a towel to wipe it down. And we're gonna pour the first base. Just make sure it's covering the whole canvas. So what we're gonna do as well is we're going to just move it like this. Make sure it covers everything. I'm probably gonna have to mix more of that paint or you can just get right on in and move it around. You also wanna get the sides just nicer when it dries. You don't have to, but I like to do that.
Okay, I definitely need more blue. Sometimes you get hairs or dust or all these little particles in the canvas. Just take it out with your finger. your base color that goes in first. That is gonna be the first color to interact with the blue. And remember with the color wheel, so if I add red, for example, if it interacts with the blue, it might turn purple, which would be kind of cool. If I wanna add the yellow base first, it might turn green first. So let's do that. The way you pour your first base, doesn't matter, but the way you pour the others do. And I'll show you that in a minute. So if you pour your second color straight down, just like that, it's gonna go straight to the bottom. You wanna tip this cup and then pour so that the colors can just lay right on top of each other. And I'll show you what that looks like, just like that. Again, what order you choose is your business. It's your artwork. Do whatever you want. And then doing one of these. You place a cup in the middle or position it wherever you wish and set it just like this. Maybe add a little more blue around it so it can just move around easily. Okay. Um, I typically just flip the cup like this. One, two, 
flip. Set it aside for a little bit. And we're gonna see what it looks like. So <laughs> I do have some green, I have some purple, which is pretty cool. So now I'm just gonna move it around. Again, your artwork, your business, do whatever you wish. Have fun with it. Look at that. Ooh, I'm so excited. It's beautiful. It's very cool. It kind of reminds me of an opal, which is a stone you can find here in Australia. Look at that. Beautiful. I do think it needs a little bit more blue. Just on the sides. Sometimes when you do this open cup, you can get a masterpiece like this and leave it alone. You don't even have to blow on it with the straw or use your breath. I'm just gonna do it now so you can see what that looks like. <laughs> this is why you can use your gloves if you don't wanna get messy. So when you blow, um, this is, I'm gonna show you the effect. So I'm gonna blow this kind of yellow out because there's too much yellow for me. So see that there. Sometimes when you blow, uh, you uncover different colors that lay underneath, which is pretty cool too. I love this so much. I don't even want to mess it up. Okay, but let's see. <laughs> okay, I don't want to mess that part. I love it. I get really excited with this. It is so cool. I don't know, should I leave it? I wish I could ask you okay um let's just leave it leave it leave it leave it and then i'll set it aside and if i decide to change it then i will but for now i think it's pretty cool maybe i'll fix this part Beautiful. 
So the white is hiding under there. And I want to bring it out a little more. So I'll show you what it looks like when you're blowing with a straw. It's a little different. Oops. You have more control. But I actually don't prefer the straw. And then I'm done! It's beautiful! Check it out! It is so groovy. Okay. I'm too excited. Too excited. Okay, next, we're gonna use the blow dryer. So this is one, maybe if you don't have it in class, you can try it at home. For this space, uh, I'm going to use red and white. I'm going to add a lot more red. So you can still do this with your, just with your breath if you don't have a blow dryer right now. So I'll show you how to do both. This is called a Dutch pour. Don't ask me why. <laughs> it just is. That's what YouTube University told me. So I'm going to continue using that name. So this is
to protect my table, I just got this plastic cover. It definitely comes in handy because look at all this paint, it goes everywhere. So I just got it for maybe a dollar at a store that's similar to Home Depot. I want to be the I want the white to be as clean as possible. So just be careful using your fingers because you might mix the paint. We don't want to do that. Just for fun, I'm going to add some silver. Sure you have a generous amount of paint on both the ends because you want the 
the paint in the middle to blow on both sides and just make it as fluid as possible. All right, we're gonna use the blow dryer. I'm gonna blow dry it maybe uh, this way first, that way, and just go back and forth. You don't have to put it on the high speed, just the low when it's fine. All right, look at that, it's beautiful. So I see a part where it needs more white paint, which is this corner. All right. So I usually like to blow um, the edges just to soften them up. If you don't have a blow dryer, when I have the squiggly line, you can use this to blow it instead, instead of the blow dryer. Just go back, forth, back, forth. It is going to take a lot longer, but, um, you know, you have to improvise. This reminds me of that big um, swirly lollipop that you get from Disneyland. It's really beautiful. Okay, I think I'm just gonna leave it. It's kind of cool the way it is. I might just move it around a little. Let me check that out. Woo! 
Beautiful. Okay. So I'm just gonna quickly show you a finished look. It takes about two to three weeks for each painting to dry. It takes quite some time. So I usually leave it in an area where there's no dust. I will actually put another box on top of this box just to close it up and just let it dry. Just don't touch it anymore. And the finished product is going to look like this. This is um, one I've done while listening to The Cure. <laughs> so I used a lot of those 80s colors, a little bit of leopard print, and then I varnished it. So the varnish actually protects the painting. It lasts longer and it has that glossy finished look. So after your paint dries for two to three weeks, then you um, varnish. And that's it, that's acrylic pouring. So happy to have been given this chance to show you and um, have fun, enjoy your time and Happy painting. Bye. I want to thank Tracy Pinedo. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Australia to visit us and share your awesome craft with us. That was beautiful. What an easy way to be creative and not expensive um, and, and just fabulous. So thank you so much, Tracy. Couple of credits as we, oh, and here's a, a close up of some of Tracy's work in the past. And then here is the two paintings she just created today. Pretty cool. Not a lot of money, not a lot of supplies and all about improvising and playing with paint and playing with color and look what you can create. How cool. Thank you so much, Tracy. Credits for Arts Week. Our Arts Week logo was done by Gabrielino Senior, Lily C2. Our Arts Week theme song, which you're about to hear, was done by seventh grade student at Jefferson Middle School, Ajani Romero. Our Arts Week promo video, the first thing you see when you visit our website, was done by Senior Gabriel Martinez. And all of our Arts Week social media was produced by our brand new marketing internship program, Public Relations, Information, and Social Media, otherwise known as PRISM. We are thankful for Vanessa Pinedo, Tracy's sister, and Jill Redding for heading up our art contest, um, sponsorships and donations, Mr. Andy Jiang and Cami Trong. Additional volunteers, Joanna Ward and Fan Shu. Very special thanks goes to all of our presenters and participants throughout Arts Week, our Gabrielino High School Key Club that helped promote the event, our arts contest judges, uh, for volunteering their time to help us out with that. Our VAPA Advisory Council, which is a group of stakeholders from our community that has helped guide visual and performing arts throughout the last two years. And of course, our SGUSD Governing Board for their unwavering support of visual and performing arts. Again, thank you to our sponsors and donate, uh, donors for this event and for visual and performing arts this past year in uh, San Gabriel. And that brings us to the end. Thank you so much for joining us.